All right, shalom, and welcome to another Bible study that Yahweh has enjoined unto us here in Stone Mountain, Georgia. My name is Isaac ben Israel, and I'm the priest of the United Congregation of Israel. And this is our weekly Bible study that we do every fourth day, or as it is uh, commonly known as Wednesday, which is even in itself a, a, a sin against our Creator for not keeping all of the things that Yahweh has given unto us. Um, um, we have been made to serve our enemies in our enemy's land. And an enemy of Yahweh is anyone or anything that causes you to worship other Elohims, other gods. So when we look at uh, uh, this setup, we have to first consider that Israel was created to be a servant. So uh, one way or another, we're going to serve Yahweh. Uh, you're either going to serve Yahweh or you're going to serve uh, 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 the heathen who uh, will then do all of these other things uh, unto us and, and make us serve with rigor. So in one way, shape, form or fashion, we are going to serve. Um, it would behoove us to serve Yahweh, which is what we were uh, created for. Um, we are doing Bible study a little bit different today, so I, 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 I pray that everything does go well. But if we have um, uh, any breaks, we are recording on the call line, um, uh, and um, we are testing our um, uh, new computer and setup. So um, please uh, uh, bear with us as we uh, 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 normally just broadcast pictures, but we want to uh, give a little bit of a... Uh, uh, tests for today. So, um, um, Yah's will will um, um, get to um, uh, 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 everything will go smooth. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, start off with a prayer. So, we're going to face the east. And all males, remove your head covering. And females always pray with their head covered. Abba Father, Most High Covenant Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, we praise your holy and divine name, Yahweh, for you are truly worthy to be praised. We pray, Father, that you would allow us to borrow of your spirit, oh Yahweh. We pray, Father, that you would allow your spirit of understanding uh, uh, and of knowledge to, to rest upon us on this day. And we pray, uh, uh, Father, that you would allow that spirit of understanding to commune with us, that we may be able to help uh, all of the lost sheep and even help educate ourselves for when we uh, uh, help teach others Yahweh you always give us a little bit for ourselves to grow on as well and we thank you Yahweh we uh, ask this uh, 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 these prayers not only for those that gather with us physically but even those that gather by way of phones and by way of internet those that gather out of a pure heart to serve you in truth and in spirit in Yahshua HaMashiach's holy and divine name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. All right. Um, we um, um, had um, a few. And, and what we always say is uh, for if people have uh, questions to um, um, go ahead and um, either email us or send us something um, uh, about uh, what it is you have a question about. And um, um, we got a email question about dealing with the uh, 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 giants and the procreation with women. This is one of the things, honestly, this was one of the things that actually uh, 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 kind of drew me toward the word I had never heard anything like that and I actually heard these things before I got in the word actually a couple of years and uh, uh, I was just fascinated at the, the the hearing of it because I had never heard anything like it um, but when I got into the word and start digging into those things and, and asking those very questions to uh, uh, my elder priest um, then he started to show me some things that let me know uh, that those things could not be so. So 
uh, and this is uh, 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 it's real easy to get to this that point because a lot of people uh, 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 talk about and issue those things out there. So there are a lot of different doctrines about these things. So um, I'm going to begin in Genesis chapter six. Genesis chapter six, and we're going to start that at verse one so that we get a, a uh, little understanding of this uh, uh, story here. Genesis chapter six, and we're going to begin at verse one. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, mm -hmm. that the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Right. Now, the first thing we have to understand is uh, who are the sons of Elohim uh, uh, at this point? Because there are certain instances where you read this book and the sons of Elohim, it is referring to angels. And then there are other times of the, where it's written, the sons of Elohim, where it is referring to men. So when you deal with this, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men. So you have a, understand what ended up happening. You have this great sin that was done um, um, by man and woman, Adam and Eve, and then the next child that was born was this son Cain. So this was the son that was directly after their deed. Needless to say, that was an evil seed. So then you even get down to that and the, the evil seed multiplied and, and began to um, uh, uh, be upon the earth before the, the, the people who did right. So this is one of the things, a lot of times people, and you, you, you see this a lot on a lot of History Channel documentaries, they start telling you, well, these people got this from this. And they'll say, well, the Bible took this from, 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 from this thing, not understanding that there was a setup in the beginning, but evil was set up on the earth before, but they had the story as well. So, and obviously evil is not going to deal with things directly as it is written. They're going to deal with it in the way that it suits the way that they want to live. So it is no wonder why uh, all many different cultures and religions have a similar beginning story. All right. So you have the sons of Elohim. They saw the daughters of men that they were fair, that they looked good and they took them wives of all which they chose. So this good seed is the sons of Elohim. This other seed is uh, 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 the sons of the adversary, the sons of sin. And we will get to a little bit more of that. So uh, you have to read it in context to figure out when it says sons of Elohim, is it talking about the angels or is it talking about regular men? And here, we see at the, the very first verse says, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Go ahead. Verse three. And Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. Right, so you, you, you see that there was a point where man had longevity upon the earth. Man was able to live for an extended period of time and because of these uh, uh, a man's tendency to sin Yahweh cut this time down to 120 years um, this was to really help man out and that's the part that we don't really see we don't see the grace of Yahweh in cutting down uh, this lifespan because what happens if a man lives consider if a man lives 900 years how many sins he could commit to the point where th th there's no restoring him. Whereas if you cut this time down, there's not but so much uh, uh, that they get to do. So we don't really see the, 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 the grace of Yahweh in that cutting down of those living years. Go ahead. 
There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that. Now, these are distinct different statements. There were giants in the earth in those days. Semicolon. And also after that, what happens is people put all of these uh, things together and make them one statement and one thought. But it's more than one thought. There were giants in the earth in those days. Semicolon. And also after that, comma. Go ahead. When the sons of Elohim came in onto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. Okay, so you have the sons of Elohim. Now, instead of dealing with, understand something, they have the sons of Elohim, they're daughters of Elohim. But the sons of Elohim didn't deal with the daughters of Elohim. They dealt with the daughters of men. So they wanted them women who look good. The same thing is happening today. That's why you have people in horrible relationships. A brother want to deal with the word and, and, and he changes his life and he get in the same thing for sisters. Sisters get in the word, but then they want to deal with a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a son of man instead of a son of Elohim. They want to deal with the sons of the flesh because they say, ooh, that brother over there look good, right? And then they go through hell every night. And the same thing with the brothers. You know, they get in the word, but then get them a fleshly sister and they have absolutely nothing but problems. So there's an automatic schism there because their spirits are not the same. They're not going in the same direction. So now uh, uh, you have the sons of Elohim, which have the spirit of Elohim working through them. But now there's a problem where they have mingled with the daughter of men. And now this thing has now turned fleshly. So now they have some gifts of the spirit. But of course, now they're going to use those things for fleshly gain. When we look at renown, it is where it says, which uh, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Renown in Strong's is H8034. Now, that word is shame. Through the idea of uh, definite conspicuous position, appellation as a mark or memorial of individuality, by implication, honor, authority, or character. So what happened is they became mighty in or people of position in the earth. Not people of a position with Yahweh our Elohim. So they have traded in being uh, their fathers being sons of Elohim, being people who walked in the spirit of this word, to now they have power naturally. Uh, uh, and this causes a, a serious uh, uh, problem. As it is written, you cannot serve Elohim and mammon. Go ahead. Verse 5. And Elohim saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented Yahweh that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. All right. So it grieved him at his heart about what uh, 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 man began to do. Now, the other thing we have to deal with in verse 4, it says there were giants in the earth in those days. Now, we have to understand that there were uh, 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 several different lines of these uh, uh, giants. Um, let's go to uh, Numbers. First of all, let's 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 go to Numbers sixteen because I I want to deal with this thing of um, um, renown. Let's let's go ahead and put that to uh, bed first. Go to number sixteen. And start that at verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Koath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moshe with certain of the children of Israel. With certain of the children of Israel. But look at the men that they got. Go ahead. 250 princes of the assembly. 250 princes of the assembly. Go ahead. Famous in the congregation 
Men of renown. Famous in the congregation. Men of renown. It was men of renown that went against Moshe. They had position and authority. They were famous in the congregation. But they didn't walk along the lines of what Yahweh, our Elohim, said. Okay? So they dealt. Here, here is that, that mingling thing that we do. We have uh, uh, the spirit and the flesh lust against one another. They do not agree with one another. And every last one of us have a fight inside of us where the spirit fights against the flesh. You have to make a decision whether or not uh, 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 which one of them you're going to allow to win. Are you going to let the spirit win or are you going to let the flesh win? So here you have a uh, 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 blessed men, but they are going against the, the setup of, of Yahweh our Elohim and they were set as men of renown and being famous in the congregation. So when you go back to these things that were in Genesis and it says the same uh, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 4, it says there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of Elohim came in unto the daughters of men and they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Now let's deal with the part of that uh, dealing with these uh, uh, giants. Let's uh, back up in Numbers to uh, chapter 13. Um, Numbers chapter 13, and let's start that at verse 16. These are the names of the men which Moshe sent to spy out the land. And Moshe called Osi, the son of Nun, Yahshua. Right. He called him uh, 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 Yahshua. And if they were really, this actually lets us know if they were really trying to say the Messiah's name, they would say Yahshua, here it is. Or if they even did Yahashua. Uh, if they were trying to do that right. Uh, so everywhere they seen this same name, Yahshua, what they did was uh, uh, throw in Jesus, and then it ended up where there are two places in the New Testament where uh, uh, it's talking about Joshua, but then it says Jesus. But then you go down to the bottom, and there's a footnote that tells you Joshua. Now you have to ask yourself, how did they make that mistake? They made that mistake because they decided that they were going to, everywhere they seen Yahshua, they were going to take it out and put Jesus. This is the way that the heathen conquers things. Uh, first, by conquering the name. Taking over the name is one thing, so that that name has a, 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 a depiction that gives you uh, uh, a picture in your brain. Later on, they will then give you an image that, that, that fits that name you know if 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 i gave you a a, a a name and i said okay i'm I'm going to go meet um you know this this brother about buying this car and they said well what's his name i said pookie there's an image that come up in your head of what pookie look like and it ain't no white dude see the name gives you an image if i said i was going to meet bill to buy a car there's an image that popped up in your head, didn't it? Okay, it wasn't the same image as when I said Pookie. So you see how they can change the culture of something by changing the name, and then later on, they will provide an image that matches the name that they changed it to. So this is a step-by-step -step, uh, 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 process. Uh, believe you me, when, when, when black folk go to fill out, you know, their, uh, uh, those... Um, um, job applications and your name is Shakita, uh, Laquaitan, and oh, they, trust me, they know you black. When you when you have those names that they just like four, five, six names just thrown together, they know these black names right here. So they already have an image in their head of what you're going to look like. So 
it's important that we understand that when we when we go through these things of how we got these images. Remember now, Yahweh is against these image things anyway. And because the children of Israel was so much against images, we didn't have a lot of those things around. So when the Euro Gentiles come to invade and they look around and they say, wow, I mean, you look on the walls of our sanctuary, we have the, 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 the holy feast days and, and, you know, names of those things. So the Euro Gentiles come as, as conquerors and look around and say, man, there's no images here. We are going to take over this thing and make it ours. So then they make images for everything. And now, you know, to this day, people will, will, will try to give you images of something and say, you see, this is what the Jews look like. Because look at this, this statue. So the, the person who made the statue could, could have done anything. But people trust more in those images than anything else. Go ahead, brother. Verse 17, Numbers chapter 13 and verse 17. And Moshe sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be in that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And be you of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob, as men cometh to Hamath. And they ascended by the south, and came unto Hebron, where Ahaman, and Shishai, and Talmai, and the children of Anak were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Now Hebron, uh, this is uh, uh, where the sons of Anak uh, are. Now we can uh, 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 go back and do some research and find out who these uh, uh, people are. But let's let's keep reading. And they came onto the brook of Eshkol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the Brook of Eshkol, because of the clusters of grapes which, grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after forty days. They went and came to Moshe, and to Aaron, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, and said, We came unto the land whether you sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover we saw the children of Anak there. The Amal Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Yebusites, and the Amorites uh, dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. So understand, the land of Israel was called Canaan land before. When we look at uh, uh, this history of who Canaan is, they are the sons of Ham. They are Hamites. So they are what we call Africans. Okay? So keep reading. And Caleb stilled the people before Moshe and said, Let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. But the man that went up with the, him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Mm -hmm. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So we then see that these uh, 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 giants, it says in verse 33, and there we saw the giants. Remember, it says, and there were giants in the earth 
in those days. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Uh, and so we were in their sight. And when we look up this whole thing of uh, Anak, then we will follow that back down to uh, 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 Canaan. And uh, uh, we get the same, uh, we get then their lineage. Let's go to our uh, Judges chapter 1. Judges chapter 1. And start that at verse 8. Judges chapter 1 and verse 8. Now the children of Yehuda had fought against Jerusalem and had taken it and smitten it with the edge of the sword and the set the city on fire. And afterward the children of Judea went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the mountain and in the south and in the valley. And Yehuda went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron before was Kerjeth Yerba. And they slew Shishai and Ahiman and Talmai. Now, those were the sons of Anak, and Arba is the father of uh, Anak. So when it says Kiriath Arba, that was uh, 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 their father. So you have these, this uh, 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 lineage of these giants, and they are Canaanites, the people who we call Africans. So we, we, we have to look at those things when we... Uh, 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 deal with that, um, that because you know there's a lot of of uh, and there's several different giants uh, listed in here. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter two and verse twenty because the common thing was, of course, giants were were uh, fallen angels who then uh, procreated with uh, women and then those uh, uh, kids became. Um, people of a renown. Um, but when we look at what's written, it says angels do not procreate. Um, let's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 2 um, and start that at verse 17. Hey, you know, you're probably going to get around to this, but as we can see, this whole giants keep going back to the Hamites. Right. And when we think of David and Goliath, David, uh, Goliath was also of the Hamites. He was a Philistine, which was a Hamite. And that, and, and that's exactly where I'm going. So we're going to show uh, several times when we go to these giants that we're going to get right back to the same area of, 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 of people here. And I mean, we still have examples of that today with Matumbo. Mm -hmm. Matumbe, the basketball player, you, right. you think about how tall that man is. Mm -hmm. And he's in Hamite. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 17. The Yahweh spake unto me, saying, You are to pass over through Ar, the coast of Moab, this day. And when you cometh near over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them. For I will not give you of the land of the children of Ammon any possession because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt there in old time, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumans. The Ammonites called them Zamzumans. Uh, keep going. A, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims, but Yahweh destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. So. When we deal with uh, uh, Anakims, we got what? Sons of Anak. So, so you find that it's dealing with this same uh, thing when it's talking about this uh, uh, Anakim. So you'll see different uh, terms, uh, but then it'll refer back. And then you have this thing of these uh, uh, Zam Zumans, which in uh, 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 some places are called Zuzims, and when you look that up, 
you also get Hamites uh, um, uh, on that if you go to Genesis 14 and verse 5. But let's go to uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 3. And let's start that at verse 11. For only king of, for only, what, verse, uh, verse 3, right? Uh, Deuteronomy verse chapter three. 3 okay. and verse 11. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Behold, his bestead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Raboth of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man. And this land, which we possessed at that time, from Er Or, which is by the river Arnon, and half Mount Gilead, and the cities thereof, gave I unto the Reubenites and unto the Gadites. So you see that Israel is then getting this land that was once held by these giants. We know once again, it's called Canaan land. So we know that these are Hamites, and Israel end up possessing that land. So you have... Uh, uh, these giants that were among uh, uh, the land that uh, 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 Yahweh had to uh, 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 dispossess. And like my brother mentioned, uh, uh, when you go and deal with the whole thing of Goliath, he is one of those remnants of those uh, 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 giants. Because uh, uh, when you deal with that, it lets you know that he was a Philistine and uh, uh, um, that he was, uh, uh, according to this book, about nine feet or so uh, uh, tall, uh, was a, a you know, very large man. So we, we, we see these things and sometimes people kind of get that uh, 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 off kilter when we start dealing with this book. Now let's uh, go and deal with the things of the sons of Elohim. A lot of times um, there are questions that are asked that you can't just read one thing and answer that question. So a lot of times, you know, you have to see if, if, if you know, people really have the time for you to really go into everything to fully understand that. I mean, you can get a short answer, but you still may not truly have an understanding of, of what's really going on. Uh, let's go to Yo chapter one. So that we can read um, this thing about the sons of Elohim. And we're going to start that at verse 1. So this whole thing is dealing with uh, 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 recapping Genesis chapter 6 in verses 2 through 4. That the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men that were fair and they took them wives of all which they choose. And then verse four, it says there were giants in the earth in those days. So we have to uh, 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 show where uh, uh, it was not an uncommon thing for them to have uh, these giants uh, among them. For these are the people that uh, uh, Yahweh uh, 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 removed out of his land and gave it to Israel. Uh, Job chapter one, and let's start that at verse one. There was a man in the land of us, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared Elohim and eschewed evil. Mm -hmm. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my son have, sons have sinned, mm -hmm. and cursed Elohim in their hearts. 
Thus did Job continually. So Job constantly offered up prayers and supplications for his sons for sins that they might have done. Not sins that they have done, for sins that they might have done. As it says, he was a perfect and upright man and one that feared Elohim. Go ahead. Now there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahweh, and Satan came also among them. Now, you have to understand something. There was a day when the <laughs> sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahweh, and Satan came also. This, of course, is talking about the angels, these sons of Elohim. Now, uh, 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 keep reading. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Whence cometh you? Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And Yahweh said unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Job? Now, let's uh, uh, jump to chapter 2 of Job. And we're going to start that uh, at verse 2. Again, there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahweh. And Satan came also among them to present himself before Yahweh. So, once again, again, there was a day when the sons of Elohim, these angels, came to present themselves before Yahweh. Satan came also among them to present himself. Now, these are back-to-back -back chapters, chapter 1, chapter 2. Both times there is an appearance being made. All of the angels are making an appearance. Now, do understand that we're, 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 we're dealing with these things. Uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 23. Um, start this Exodus 23 and verse 14. Three times you shall keep a feast unto me in the year. Right. Now we know that there, there are seven feasts, um, uh, seven holy days, but there's something uh, particular that he's given about these here. Go ahead. You should keep the feast of unleavened bread. You shall eat unleavened bread seven days, as I command you, in the time appointed of the month of Bib, for in it you came out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. None shall appear before me empty. So they must come present themselves, and they must have an offering. Go ahead. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labors, which you have sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year when you have gathered in your labors out of the field. So that was three times. Go ahead. Three times in the year, all your males shall appear before Yahweh, your Elohim. Three times in the year. So what? Uh, when you go back to what is written, uh, uh, the, the, the example of a prayer said, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we see that in heaven, these sons of Elohim, they came to make their appearance. We read of two back to back. Now we can understand when we look at what Yahweh has given, because understand, he said, let us make man in our image. So in the image and likeness of Elohim made he man. So now you have this, this setup. Even all of the things that were given to us by the tabernacle and uh, all of the understanding of that, that was, was given by the things that were already ordained in heaven. Remember, uh, 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 Abraham met uh, 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 Melchizedek, uh, priest of the Most High and king of Salem. You have to understand, there is no family of Israel set up at this point of, of dealing with uh, Abraham. So, But there's already a priest. So these are things that are going on in heaven. So when you understand what was given unto man... This is why we can't change and we can't add and we can't do our own little thing or say, you know, my flesh don't like this. These things are already in heaven and we don't have the power to alter. This is the problem. When we alter things for it to be, you know, righteous, that thing has to, to mimic what it was set up uh, uh, in image and in, in its likeness of that was in heaven. So man was made in the image and likeness of Elohim. So then you have these holy days that were set up 
in the likeness of the things that were already in heaven. Even when you deal with uh, Melchizedek, it says Christ was then made a priest after the order of Melchizedek. How? He was a priest and a king and he would never die. Melchizedek had no beginning, no ending, no father, no mother. So we understand what's happening here. So, you know, there, there, there are things that are a little bit more to some things than, than uh, uh, what we know of. Let's go to uh, John, Yohanan, chapter 1. Yohanan, chapter 1. And... You know, it started at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. Right. Uh, um, after that baptism, uh, it was said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Uh, but that wasn't said uh, when he was 12 teaching people in the temple. That was said when he received that baptism, and then they saw the Spirit in the bodily shape of a dove, and it rested on him. That was the spirit that entered into that body. That was the son, not the physical fleshly man that the spirit entered into. The spirit that descended, that was his son in whom he was well pleased, of whom we are named after. That was Israel. If you go back to uh, Exodus and Yahweh says, Israel is my firstborn, uh, firstborn son. Let my son go that he may serve me. Go ahead. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Right. Remember, it said, let us make man. So when it comes down to this creation, then Israel has to come and suffer for this creation. Go ahead. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from Elohim, whose name was Yohanan. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Mm -hmm. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Right, because the world saw the flesh. They were not able to see that he was the true son of Elohim because they were not able to bear witness with that spirit. Remember, he would ask people, uh, 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 are you offended in me? Does this offend you? Go ahead. He came on to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him... To them gave he power to become the sons of Elohim, even to them that believe on his name. Right. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of Elohim, even to them which are born, uh, 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 we, even to them which be, that believe on his name. Uh, keep reading. And, you know, just to clarify here, we see that this is referring to regular men being the sons of Elohim. Regular men being the sons of Elohim. Where we just went through angels being referred to as the sons of Elohim. Exactly. And and it's going to give it. Keep, keep, read this next verse. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Elohim. Right. So it says, unless you be born again, you cannot enter into that kingdom. We then were given this whole thing of baptism to be born again. And uh, uh, we have then that there's another birth, just like there was another birth for Yahshua. So now we're talking about these sons of Elohim were born a different way. So consider Yahshua was born a different way. First of all, not coming through the regular uh, uh, interaction between man and woman. Then you're talking about the baptism and the spirit descending and resting on that body. See, we have the opportunity to have a different birth. We already had a natural one. To have that spiritual birth, now we are born a different way. Go ahead. And the word was made flesh 
and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yohanan bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. For he was before me. Not this whole thing of the, the, the physical man. It was this spirit. This spirit was always before. This is, uh, uh, we're talking the creator of flesh coming to live in flesh. Uh, the, the, the part that we often get confused is the let us make man. Understand, this is my people that are called by my name. Understand, we not call Yahwehites. He didn't even give us that name right away. He gave us Israel. We are called Israelites. Then he gave us uh, uh, his holy name of Yah. So when you look at even the names of these prophets, you can go down these books and, 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 and you find uh, Yoel, Ezekiel, uh, uh, all of these names, but then at a certain point, you know, Samuel, uh, then at a certain point you start seeing what? Nehemiah, Jeremiah, you know, Obadiah, all of these things now ending in Yah, but before they only in, uh, ended in El. So you have El, which is singular, Elohim, which is plural. So El, Elohim, and then you get to where he gave us his name, then you start seeing these names ending in Yah. And the adversary wants to tell you that this name is so holy that you cannot pronounce this name. Yet what's written in his book says that you must publish the name of, of, of Yahweh. Now, what's funny is um, uh, we get that um, doctrine from the people who call themselves Jews, uh, yet they have a, a, a leader called Netan Yahu. But they tell you that you have to tell, uh, uh, call uh, 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 Yah Shem. But I ain't never heard him say Net and Shem who. <laughs> so you, you see how this thing uh, 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 jumps in and out when it comes down. Uh, uh, we can see here on earth who the sons of Elohim are because they walk according to the culture uh, 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 that is given unto them. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And we're going to read verses 14 through 39. Romans chapter 8. And we're going to start that at verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of Elohim, they are the sons of Elohim. So now we see a, a natural example given unto us for earthly men and how they are separated from these men of renown. How they are separated from these other men. These sons of Elohim are led by the Spirit of Elohim. Understand, it says, Abraham believed and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. See, what we don't understand of how deep that belief and faith was then, we have a book, and most of us still can't follow, and we got a book. We get together sometimes and argue over the book, and there are instructions in the book. What, 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 what Abram was told, go to a place which I shall tell you of. What you mean I shall? That means start walking. And when you get there, I tell you when you get there. You know how difficult that has to be? You got a woman to try that with your woman. See what happens. Tell her we finna move. When we move to a place which I shall tell you of. See how that work out for you. So when you talk about being led by the spirit, these people were truly led by the spirit of Elohim. Not knowing which way they were going to turn or which way they were going to go. Go ahead. Verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of Elohim. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. 
that we are the children of Elohim. Go ahead. And if children, then heirs, heirs of Elohim, and joint heirs with the Mashiach. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Mm -hmm. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of Elohim. The whole earth is waiting on uh, 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 to see who the sons of Elohim are. For it's not just this thing of, oh, it's, it's these uh, uh, so-called African Americans and the other people that were spread across the globe as slaves. These people are the children of Israel. Yes, that part is true, but they are not accounted just for the flesh because all of those people are not sons of Elohim. See, understand that it is written that Israel is a disobedient and gainsaying people. So just because you uh, fit within that 12 tribe uh, 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 breakdown doesn't mean that you're a son of Elohim. Son, sons of Elohim follow his spirit and his direction. Those children and the men of renown, they won't be directed. Because, see, they're men of, of power. That's why you always see people, they, they, they jump back and forth from congregation to congregation, or they have to start their own thing. They can't take instruction. And one thing about Yahweh, Yahweh will not let a man lead who cannot follow. He had Yahshua follow Moshe and take orders all those years. Then turn around and cause him to lead. What did he do with Moshe? Moshe had to go out and, 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 and learn under another priest, even though that priest wasn't a priest of Yahweh. He learned under another priest and even married the daughter, one of the daughters of that priest. So Yahweh has a way of, 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 of dealing with, uh, uh, with those things and the sons of Elohim accept Yahweh's will for their life. Go ahead. Romans chapter 8 and verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of Elohim. Uh, it says the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of Elohim. The whole earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of Elohim. The earth cannot continue to, to be inhabited under the present conditions. The earth is, 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 you know, because people are trying to make so much money, they do all this fracking to try to make, you know, a uh, find oil and they know it causes earthquakes and it causes all these other things and it erodes all of the, just tears up the environment. But because they want to make money um, under this Euro Gentile rule, all of these things are fair game as long as they can make money off of it. This is why the creature groans and 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 is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of Elohim, because the earth is going to get the to, to rest. The earth is then finally going to get the, the 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 rest that Yahweh has said that it deserves. The land should rest for a certain time. There are certain things that that, that there's certain environmental things that just will not happen under a righteous rule. We will not be able to allow it. It must be cleaned up. So the earth itself is waiting on the children of Israel. Go ahead. You know, brother, you're talking about the earth and, and its ability to help itself. You know, uh, I had someone say something to me that was quite interesting when I thought about it. You know, he says the earth is trying to fix itself. That's why the pollen count is so high. Mm -hmm. But then you think about it, there's less trees. Right. But the pollen count is higher. Right. So she's actually trying to fix herself by creating more trees. The same thing your body do when it get a fever. It's trying to push out certain impurities and it's trying to do the, it's trying to fix itself. What man, man in his wickedness is always trying to take certain things of Elohim and, and recreate it. The tongue is a strength. It says it's an unruly evil. But let me tell you something. The tongue has something that they wish they could figure out. Because you can, I can take a knife right now and slice my tongue. And do you know, in, in time, we just sit right here. Do you know that tongue will grow back? People who get their tongue pierced, 
They have to keep that thing in their tongue. You know why? As soon as they pull it out, it regenerates and closes up. The thing grows back together. So they want to figure out how can they recreate these things to where what you see these movies where they cut off the arm and the arm grows back. Where do you think that comes from? That comes from what the tongue does. So this is one of these, these, these things that things are trying to repair itself. Your tongue said, man, boy, ain't no hope for to be in it. So it automatically starts trying to fix itself. But then you look at areas where Yahweh has said, okay, if a man is going to be a servant, let him bear through his ear with an awl. Uh, it takes much longer for an ear to close up uh, uh, a hole in it after you've been a servant for a considerable amount of time. Go ahead. Romans chapter 8 and verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. Mm -hmm. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we, the patience, wait for it? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, mm -hmm. but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit itself makes intercession for us with uh, groanings which cannot be uttered. So it doesn't mean that we're not supposed to pray. You pray the way you're supposed to do and pour out your heart unto Yahweh, uh, uh, your Elohim, and the Spirit will help you. See, uh, um, there's something I must uh, 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 point out here. Romans 8 and verse 26 says, likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities. You know, there's a difference between help and doing it for you. See, many times that's when people say, you know, I thought you said you were going to help me. I am. I'm here. I'm waiting on you. See, sometimes people think, you know, help me, you know, they're going to sit down and drink coffee and, you know, Eat a Danish while you do all the work. No, 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 no. It is written. It says, I stand and knock out the door. If any man will open that door and, and come in, I will come in and sup with him and him with me. That's a back and forth transaction. I stand and knock at the door. Somebody got to open the door. Somebody got to let somebody in. Somebody takes a step, then the other person takes a step. That's back and forth interaction. That's not just... Oh, okay, I came into the Word, and then I just waited for Yahweh. Go ahead. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of Elohim. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of Elohim. Go ahead. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Elohim, to them who are the called according to his purpose. To them who are who are the called according to his purpose. Verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate mm -hmm. to be conformed to the image of his son, uh -huh. that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That he might be the firstborn of many brethren. So we're talking about a different kind of birth. Go ahead. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What, sh what shall we then say to these things? If Hel Elohim be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Right. So uh, 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 he spared not his own son. So when we are born again, we are born into the death of the son being now sons of Elohim. See, there's a different birth process for sons of Elohim. We are baptized unto his death. That's what those things mean when it's talking about uh, 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 being baptized unto Christ's death. Go ahead. Who shall lay anything to the charge of Elohim's elect? It is Elohim that justifies. 
who is he that condemneth? It is the Messiah that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of Elohim, who also maketh intercessions for us. Who also maketh intercession for us. So then you have, uh, and as, as it is written, it says Yahweh purges and scourges every son whom uh, 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 he receives. So you have as a father, he disciplines his children. But for those who refuse to be disciplined and refuse to accept any disciplinary action, then those get turned over to the adversary and then they can be his sons and daughters. Uh, let's go to First uh, Yohanan chapter 3. First John 3. And let's uh, start that at verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of Elohim. Once again, that we should be called the sons of Elohim. Go ahead. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Right. The world knoweth us not. When we start talking about the things of this word, people start looking at you like, you know, you just come from another planet. These people have this book and they've had this book for decades. It's, it's sitting on their coffee table, open to a favorite psalm with a light on it. They have never read it. So when you start talking about it, and even if they have, they were never taught how to read it correctly. So they don't really understand what's going on in it. So when you start talking about it, you start to see that they, they're looking at you as if you're from another world. You are. You were born of a different spirit. Not the same spirit that they were born from their mama and their daddy. This is why he says, no man can come to me and love his mother and father more than me. See, that means you're still clinging on to your natural birth and not your spiritual birth. See, that's that thing that we used to say when we was growing up. We were taught that thing. Blood is thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water. That meant you dealt with your family first and foremost. Well, the same thing is true. Blood is thicker than water. The blood of Yahshua is thicker than any water of natural connection. So the same thing holds true, but you just got a different family. And Yahshua will not allow servants to come to him and still cling on to the nest. Because there's some people that are just so the adversary will use that to get to you. Bring your own people in the word and then let them people come against you just to see if he can get you to see if you're going to cling closer to your natural family or your spiritual family. Because see, some people, they come in the word in the buddy system and they leave out of the word in the buddy system. But since I came here with my buddy and my buddy is mad, you know, with the guy who read because, you know, he be saying Holy Ghost instead of Holy Spirit. So I got, my buddy got to leave, so I got to leave because we in the buddy system. Ain't no buddy salvation package plan. You gonna stand for judgment on your own and your buddy gonna stand for judgment on your own. But there's some people that that's how they move. So Yahshua automatically said he can't do nothing with those people. There are certain trials and tribulations that we go through in this word just so Yahshua can prove to you what manner of spirit you are of? Are you going to cling to that natural thing and forsake Yahshua? Then there ain't nothing he can do with you. And you step back. Go ahead. Verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of Elohim, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when, we shall, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Right. Now... Uh, uh, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Understand, he was able to move and, and, and change the, the likeness of himself. That people at one point, they saw him and they just felt the spirit, but he didn't look the same. And then he showed himself to them. So understand, we're talking about a, 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 a different kind of uh, 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 body uh, there. Uh, let's go to Zechariah chapter 5, because um, we need to also deal with this whole thing. When we uh, uh, deal with this, 
we ended up having to go and, and, and get a little understanding on these things of uh, uh, called angels. So, because the whole thing was that the 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 uh, uh, sons of Elohim uh, that they believe are angels, and then the 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 angels then you know the the story is uh, uh, so called dealt with women. So let's let's deal with Zechariah chapter five, and let's start that at verse five, so we can deal with. Um, um, this image of the uh, uh, um, angels. Go ahead. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now your eyes and see what is that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. Mm -hmm. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. This is a woman that sits in the midst of the ephah. Go ahead. And he said, this is wickedness. This is wickedness. Go ahead. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then I lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings. Right. Now, the most commonly uh, a given image of an angel is a woman with wings. Now, when you read this book, what you see constantly are men, 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 and you don't see any wings. When you even see uh, 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 the angels that went among Sodom and Gomorrah, those men said, bring those men out that came in here that we may know them. Now, you think they was trying to jump on somebody back who had wings on? Go ahead. For they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whether do these bear the ephah? Now, consider uh, where do these uh, uh, bear the ephah? Now, consider where this is going to be set up. Go ahead. And he said unto me, To build it an house in the land of Shinar. Shinar is Babel. This is Babylon. So this image that we've gotten of the angel with the two wings is a Babylonian thing. So this completely fits. Go ahead. And it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Right. You have people that have all of these images of angels. They have angel figurines all throughout uh, their houses. Some of them have just straight cases just for nothing but their images of 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 their angels. Um, and it is written, let no man uh, uh, involve you in a uh, uh, humility of worshiping angels being puffed up by his fleshly mind, things that he has not seen. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 32 and we're going to read verses 24 through 32. I know it's funny that it talks about those wings of the stork because mm -hmm. it's always some white wings that we get and the stork is white. Always. And I tell you what, they make sure that they give you all of these, 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 these images and, you know, people see these images and it, and it gives them that, that, that cool feeling, that, that York peppermint patty feeling. They just, they go, oh, I, I just got chills. So, so I know it's real because I, because I felt that chill. Right, that's chill you giving to yourself. Yeah, I used to feel it the same way when I put up my Christmas tree. <laughs> now, how did how did that chill go away? Knowledge. It is written in this book. You should not even set up a grove near anything uh, holy unto Yahweh. And a grove is a Christmas tree. It's an evergreen tree. So. You know, uh, I used to get that euphoric feeling as I rode down the street. We used to go riding just so we can look at the houses with all the Christmas lights. And then we'd get that chill. Ooh, that York Puppermint Patty feeling. Just, ooh, look at that. Ooh. Right. It wasn't, that was something that was created in your mind. Free your mind and the rest of you will follow. Go ahead. Start in verse 1. Uh, this is uh, what? Genesis 32, do 24.
And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. He wrestled with a man. He ain't wrestled with no woman with wings. He didn't wrestle with no brother with wings. He wrestled with a man. Go ahead. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let you go, except you bless me. And he said unto him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Now, listen. Your name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Now, the angel is telling him this. Go ahead. For as a prince. Has, as a prince. What is a prince? Next door. Next to the king. He's the next in line. So you have Yahweh. Yahweh said his son was Israel. Now, so then you then have Yaakov being named Israel for you are a prince and have you power with Elohim and men and have prevailed. He didn't name him Yahweh. He named him after the son, after the prince. Go ahead. And Yaakov asked him and said, tell me, I pray pray you your name right and this is why i have a problem with uh a lot of these other books the book of enoch and things like that because uh when you get down to there's only a couple of names of angels that we know throughout this entire book yet this one book just has so many angels names that it is absolutely pitiful yet we don't get that many names throughout every last one of these things go ahead and he said Wherefore is it that you ask of my name? And he blessed him there. And Yaakov called the name of that place Peniel. For I have seen Elohim face to face, and my life is preserved. Right. The angel said, none of your business. You don't need to know my name. Yet, these other books have all of these things, and they have all of these names, and there's a, there, there's a problem with that. And we're going to come... Back to that, let me uh, uh, go to Joshua. Give me Joshua chapter 5. Start where? Um, read verses 13 through 15. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And, behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. Now, there's a man stood over against him with the sword of his hand, a sword drawn in his hand. Now, don't you think he would have kind of noticed if it was a big uh, wings hanging out the back? Now, one thing you're going to find about these Enochians, they love that winged angel thing. See, that this whole book of Enoch gives a lot of these brothers the opportunity to go back uh, 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 and get their Christian rocks off. They get to go ahead and and, 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 and worship the angels. They get to go ahead and deal with the winged uh, 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 things because they are brothers that, that, that'll that tell you, now angels have wings. Go ahead. And Yahshua went on to him and said unto him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but as the captain of the host of Yahweh am I now come. And Yahshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith my master unto his servant? Mm -hmm. And the captain of the host, and the captain of Yahweh's host said unto Yahshua, Loose your shoe from off your foot, for the place whereon you standeth is holy. And Yahshua did so. Right. So we see once again that this was a man uh, 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 here. Not that uh, he saw uh, some winged animal. Now, when you deal with uh, 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 this thing of uh, 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 the go go to Jude chapter one. Jude, Jude. Go to Yehuda, and it, it it ain't but one chapter, which is why I have to. You know, this is where all the Enochians get their 
so-called thing. That Now, they justify a whole book off of what's written in here. Now, you have to really ask yourself a question because there's only one book, one chapter, okay? One book, one chapter. And now they then take that and say, you see, he talked about the book of Enoch. No, he didn't. He said Enoch prophesied. He didn't say anything about the book of Enoch. But even that, uh, start that at verse 1. You, the servant of Yahshua the Mashiach, and brother of Yaakov, to them that are sanctified by Elohim the Father, and preserved in Yahshua the Mashiach, and called. Now, why am I going into this? A lot of the same brothers who are teaching this, uh, uh, the, the giants procreated with women, these are uh, so-called, those are the same Enochian brothers. These are the same brothers that believe in that Enoch calendar. These are the same brothers that believe in, you know, the angels have wings. So you're getting, this is all their, their, their doctrine up in here. So there's a reason why I'm going into this. Go ahead. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful, needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now remember the, 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 the writing here and how this sounds. Go ahead. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Elohim into lasciviousness and denying the holy Adonai Elohim and our Adonai Yahshua the Mashiach. I will therefore put you in remembrance though you once knew this, how that the Adonai, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto, judge, unto the judgment of the great day. Right. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under dar uh, 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 darkness unto the judgment of that great day. So these angels have a judgment waiting for them. Uh, 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 those who have left their first estate and decided to do otherwise. Understand, Lucifer is also going to wage war in heaven and try to overthrow Yahweh. Go ahead. Verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them like, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. All right, jump down to, to verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Adonai cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Now, this is where the Enochians say, you see, you see, he said, uh, uh, Enoch said it. Where did he see it? In the book of Enoch. Oh. So now they come up, they got a whole book based on this line. Now, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2. Start that at verse 1. Now, I want you to remember the writing. Now, we didn't even go through all of uh, 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 Jude 1. But consider, it's one book, one chapter, and it has, it's the only place that had this one thing where it talks about uh, 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 Enoch prophesied such and such. Now, read 2 Peter 2 and see if you don't hear the exact same wording. Now, we know who Cephas is. Cephas was given the keys to the church. Cephas was, was even the one over Saul. He was, he, he was given this direct. So you have to wonder, if we have a duplicate book, who then is the author uh, the authoritative figure here? Uh, start this at verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even den denying the Adonai that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if Elohim spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, 
to be reserved unto judgment. Now, the word that was uh, uh, used there, the Greek word, was not the same as Sheol uh, uh, as the grave. So understand uh, that they use hell right there and how they uh, 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 translated that. Go ahead. Where, what, what verse you at? Verse 5. Okay. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned with them an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Adne knoweth how to deliver the, the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusations against them before the Adonai. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. Okay, um, uh, uh, hold you place right there. I'm going to read to you Jude, right after he just read that Jude, verse 6. And the angels were kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of a eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers despise the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Mo Moshe. So we, we, you have to look at how, how much of this is almost darn near exact uh, 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 in the way that it's set up. Go ahead. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of, evil of the things that they understand not, uh -huh. and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, mm -hmm. and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime. Mm -hmm. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Okay, this is Jude chapter... Uh, 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 12, uh, Jude chapter 1 and verse 12. These are spots on your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about winds, trees whose fruit withered without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Go ahead. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. Okay, so with that, I just wanted to make the, 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 the point that even in the one book that they so-called use to justify uh, uh, this whole thing of the, the uh, uh, Enoch, calendar you then find uh that there is a book that that very much uh, uh uh could have been borrowed from uh let's go to matthew chapter 22 because these are the same brothers that's teaching that same same thing about the the the, the giants being fallen angels that procreated matthew chapter 22 and let's read verses 23 through 30. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him. Now, because they question the resurrection, they're going to uh, 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 ask him this thing, this biblical concept here, and they're using this law to question his resurrection because so they think that this law is going to prove that there's no way that the resurrection can be so go ahead saying master 
Moshe said, If a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Uh -huh. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and, having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Mm -hmm. Likewise the second also, and the third, unto the seven. And last of all, the woman died also. Mm -hmm. Therefore in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. So now what he did was present this situation as going to be a schism in the resurrection. For then they're going to say, well, whose wife is she then? Because she was married to, 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 to me first. Yeah, but she was married to me second. Then me third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So now they said, we have a problem. Your resurrection pre uh, 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 has this problem then with... Whose wife is this woman going to be? Go ahead. Yahshua answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of Elohim. Uh -huh. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of Elohim in heaven. But are as the angels of Elohim in heaven, which do not procreate, which do not marry. So according to Yahshua, it is not a possibility. Let's go to Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 20, and let's read verses 34 through 36. Let's see how Luke describes this. <clears throat> and Yahshua answering said unto them, The children of this world marry, and are given in marriage. Mm -hmm. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, that world, go ahead, and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry, nor are given in marriage. Uh -huh. Neither can they die anymore. Neither can they die anymore, go ahead. For they are equal unto the angels. Uh -huh. And are the children of Elohim, uh -huh. being the children of the resurrection. Now that the dead are raised, even Moshe, Moshe showed at the bush, when he called it the Adonai, the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Esau, and the El of Yaakov. Right. So they can't die anymore. They are equal unto the angels, and they are children of Elohim. So then we have uh, 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 something completely uh, 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 different set up right there. Let's go to uh, uh, John, Johanna, next book over. Chapter 8. Reverse. Um... Let's do um, verse, let's go to Johanna chapter 8 uh, and verse 37. I know that you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Right, because it, the... the those of the flesh cannot understand anything of the spirit. The things of the spirit confound them. They can't, no matter how many times you read it to them, no matter how many times you do anything, they cannot receive it. Flesh and spirit are enemies one with another. They cannot agree. They will not agree. If you're trying to walk in the spirit, you're going to have a problem in the flesh. The flesh is going to attempt to stop that. Go ahead. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. So now they might have natural fathers, but spiritually they have a different father based upon their actions and their deeds, the spirit in which they go about doing their business. He says, I speak that which I have seen with my father. And you do that which you have seen with your father. Go ahead. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yahshua saith unto them, If you were Abraham's children, 
you would do the works of Abraham. Uh -huh. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of Elohim. This did not Abraham. Right. So, uh, uh, but you seek to kill me, a man who have told you the truth. And when people cannot receive the truth, it is much easier to kill the messenger. Go ahead. You do the deeds of your father. You do the deeds of your father. Go ahead. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even Elohim. Yahshua said unto them, If Elohim were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from Elohim. Neither came, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Right. You cannot hear the word. There are people that have gone to church for 40, 50 years. And you try and speak this word and it is clear as the, as the day is long. And you say it and they just can't receive it. Right. Go ahead. <clears throat> you are of your father the devil. And the lust of your fathers you will do. You are of your father the devil. The, and the lust of your father you will do. What we don't understand is being born again. We took off that 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 being uh, 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 born of the daughter of Babylon and having uh, uh, our father being uh, uh, the adversary. For we went to church on Sunday. It is clear as day. Uh, what is written? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, what the church is doing now is offering optional Saturday services. Just drive by the churches and look at the signs. All of them are starting to uh, offer optional Saturday service. Why? Because it's a lot of Hebrews putting this out. People are saying these are the commandments. According to what is written, he who breaks even the least of these commandments are considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. So then they say, all right, well, we got to cover this. There's too many Hebrews in town. So uh, we're going to have optional Saturday service. So now it's not a commandment. It's a suggestion. They can go to Saturday service if they want to. So then the people will try to say, okay, you see, we, we, we offer Sabbath service. No, but then you're gonna still have Sunday morning service at the same time. So they can worship the sun God on his day. You are of your father, the devil, and the works of your father you will do. Go ahead. You are, um, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Uh -huh. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. He is a liar and the father of it. So when you tell a lie, you owe him. He is the creator of that. If Kish write a song and then he gets that song copywritten and I decide I want to perform Kish's song. Guess what I got to do? I got to pay Kish. I don't just get to perform his song on TV and on and, and on other places. I got to pay him for that. He wrote that. That's his stuff. So the adversary, the devil, invented lying. So every time you tell one, you owe him more. So he wants you to just keep on lying. Lie, 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 lie. He wants you to lie like a Persian rug. Just lie. Just be fluffy. Just feel good to the skin. Just, just get all comfy with that lie. Because he know one thing. One lie going to need another lie. Because lies lonely. Lies always need other lies. So you, you're going to tell one lie, then you're going to need another lie, and then another lie, and then another lie. And then you're getting deeper in debt to him. And sooner or later, that debt is going to come due with interest. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to start that at verse 1. Dear any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust, and not before the saints. When we have an issue, we're supposed to deal with those things with one another. Our thing should be, uh, uh, this kind of shows you even how they were trying to set up the things among 
uh, the Euro Gentile churches that you understand that those things should be taken care of in house. But you know what ends up happening? People have more connection with people outside of the church than they do inside of the church. It, they can relate to people outside of the church better. Why? Because those people are children of the flesh. And if people are more comfortable being in their flesh than walking in the spirit, they're going to always be more comfortable with fleshly people. See, when, 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 when somebody walk up half naked and then somebody else walk up fully clothed, one of them feels uncomfortable. See, so what people got to do is then convince you, you need to take off some of those clothes, you know, but they're but they going to tell it to you like, man, why are you so overdressed and blah, 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 blah. Really, they now feel some type of way because you are dressed appropriately and you are making them feel uncomfortable. It's exactly what happens in the games when some old clean, new, squeaky clean dude come and join the game. And he's, man, we don't feel comfortable around you, man. Why not? Because because we all murder and pillage. And we ain't never seen you murder and pillage. So we don't feel comfortable around no squeaky clean dude. So if you're going to hang with this game, your initiation to get to hang with us, we need to see you do murder and pillage. That way we can feel comfortable being around you that you do what we do. See, it makes people uncomfortable. When it, when it gets down to that. Because they say, man, you can turn state's evidence on me because we ain't never seen you do anything. So so they don't feel comfortable when, when, when you're not just as they are. Go ahead. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you worthy to judge the smallest matters? Are you unworthy? Are, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Uh-huh. No, you're not. That we shall judge angels? Know you not that we shall judge angels? Well, you look at these things, it says that the, the angels which left their former estate are reserved unto judgment. Now you get this and then you say, okay, so the children of Israel, after having all of these, consider something. Each church is governed by an angel. You have angels that are directing these organizations into doing what it is they're supposed to do. So you have these angels and then you have the angels who have left their former estate and will have to be judged because they tried to destroy man. They will then be judged by man. Yahweh is poetic in how he deals with judgment. Go ahead. How much more the things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother go to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Before the unbelievers. We'll put more trust in the unbelievers uh, 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 than we do on dealing with one another. Rather than deal with one another, we'll go and deal with the unbelievers. Go ahead. Now, therefore, this is utterly a fault among you, because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? See, that's, that is what the flesh cannot do. The puffed up flesh can't take wrong. Why, why, why do you not rather take wrong? Yahshua suffered for something that wasn't any of his fault. Why, why do you not rather take wrong? We are so puffed up. We got to get us some get back. We got to get us some vengeance. And Yahweh going to get vengeance on us. Go ahead. Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? No, you do wrong and defraud and that your brethren. And that your brethren. So that makes your sin exceedingly sinful because you have defrauded your own brethren. It is written uh, 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 that we must uh, 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 be kindly affectioned one to another. Be good to all men, especially those of the household of faith. I've seen how some people treat other church members and they can't believe that those people are in the same household of faith. But 
when all you see is yourself because the flesh won't, the flesh sees something different than the spirit. And what happens is when people are fighting that, 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 that spirit and letting that flesh win, it's going to always be a problem. All of those actions are going to be start to become more and more fleshly because you are allowing the flesh to win. We all have a fight to fight. And sometimes the flesh may win one day. You get back up, dust yourself off, and, and you got to help that spirit win. But if the flesh constantly wins, then either there's a lack of spirit in there or you have just decided you're not going to use any of that spirit to fight the flesh. Go ahead. Verse 9. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of Elohim. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Adonai Yahshua and by the spirit of our Elohim. Right. And such were some of you, but you are washed, sanctified, justified in the name of the Adonai Yahshua by the spirit of our Elohim, because you were born again. You are, in, are, are not dealing with that birth of the natural manner, but dealing with that birth of of spiritual nature being then one of the sons and or daughters of Elohim. Uh, that's all that we're going to do for uh, uh, tonight. Let's uh, leave out with the prayer. We're going to uh, face the east. And all males, remove your head covering. Um, all males remove your head covering and females always pray with their head covered. Abba Father, Most High Covenant Elohim of Abraham, Isaac and Yaakov, we thank you Yahweh for allowing us the opportunity to gather together and read out of this legacy that you have left unto us. We pray Father that you would uh, open up our hearts that we may be able to receive uh, uh, these things receive uh, uh, this information and uh, 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 let it make us stronger in our walk. For we know that Israel must come to a reckoning with Jake at some point. Uh, and we know that uh, 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 damnable heresies must be uh, uh, among us. We know that we must deal with these things at some point. And we pray, Father, that you would strengthen us, that we may be able to uh, 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 fight this fight and glorify your great and holy name. We ask these prayers not only for those that gather with us, but even those that gather by way of phones and by way of internet, those that gather out of a pure heart to serve you in truth and in spirit. In Yahshua HaMashiach's holy and divine name we pray. Amen and hallelujah.